Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna analyze, the band is called Muse, song is Butterflies and Hurricanes. Okay, so what we're gonna hear here is, we're gonna hear really just two sections, because what they do in this song that's really peculiar is they have an A section and then an A prime section and then another prime section. So, you know, something slightly different. Let's do it really dark, I guess. So all of these are A, but they're actually kind of building on each other. So A, A prime, A, we would call this double prime. So it's another iteration of A. And what they do is they start off soft and then they give us kind of the same material again, but they get bigger and louder. And then again, but they get bigger and louder and they just keep going. And in fact, we could even represent this maybe even better by instead of using colors, instead of only using colors, doing something like this. This is kind of more accurate for what it feels like. A, bigger A, bigger A, and then we'll see what happens from there. Okay, so let's think of the form this way, just for fun. Now there is a video to this um, online that you can find of this song. I'm not gonna use it because they shorten the song a little bit and they cut out some of this middle section that's so powerful to me. So I'm just gonna play uh, the recording and then I will, um, I'll put together this outline while we go so you can see what I'm doing here. Here we go. Everything you are and everything you
Okay, and then that's the end. So pretty weird song, right? So check it out. A, A prime, A double prime, A triple prime, A quadruple prime, A quintuple prime, A septuple prime, A heptuple prime. B, although I wouldn't really call this a B section, I would call this a, a bridge. So really I'd probably call that all part of the next section because it was really transitory. It really just kind of served to get us to the next section. This is that big long piano solo. And then here was our big resolution. Going out of that into that, we went back into the A section, but the quietest part of the A section. Let me, let me get back to that real quick here. Okay, so here's the piano solo. We're in here. And now, very delicately, we go back into A. Right there. And it's very fragile, but then he very quickly jumps to A full steam. Skips a couple steps here and just gets real loud, real fast. Right here. But still leaving us room to get even bigger. And now we're here for the last one. So that takes us out to the end. So I love this piece because our resolution, our, our release back into the A section is so delicate. And this transition is so long. It's like this crazy, weird, bizarre piano solo all the way in the middle of it. It doesn't need to be that long to be that effective. It could be just as short as everything else and still be equally effective. It could be like that, and it could still have just as much power uh, if it was done carefully. But the longer you make this, the easier it is for th this to be really powerful, even though it's one of the quietest moments of the song. It might be the quietest moment of the song other than the very, very beginning. So uh, kind of a goofy form, sometimes using uh, the size of shapes to depict form can be handy. Uh, it's not normal um, if you were just, if you had a professor ask you to write out the form for a song, you wouldn't do that necessarily. But in a case like this, I think it really shows more clearly what's happening than just shapes and colors. So check out that song. Muse does a lot of really interesting stuff with form. Uh, I really like their music. Okay, with that, let's move on and let's talk about meter. Uh, some things we can do with meter that really push this idea of tension and release. <laughs> 